Uh, hi, uh, my name is Nils Ari Ligor, and this is my shop. I have an antique uh, art gallery in Olesen, um, and I probably have the biggest collection of Norwegian enamel and silver in Norway. Um, some of the best pieces was made in the Art Nouveau period. That was a very wealthy period. Um, not a lot of unemployment, a lot of Norway was extremely poor at the time, so we had silver mines, we had good craftsmen, we had cheap labor, so some of the best pieces in art has been produced in this era. Uh, some of my most, the rarest pieces is, for example, this Viking ship, which would have taken up to four months to produce. Um, it's an Art Nouveau piece. It's done in filigree, so it's all made in silver, and the little threads have been made into a Viking ship. Then there's put, put glass inside these cells. This was so difficult to do that only a handful of jewelers in the world managed this technique, and the Norwegians were the masters. Um, the guy who made it, his name was Marius Hammer. He was the wealthiest merchant of Bergen. He had 130, 20, 30 employees that were making luxurious goods in Bergen. Uh, he had little shops at every tourist destination. And he also had a big shop in London called Viking in Animal Co. Um, this Viking ship would have been the ultimate souvenir for somebody visiting Norway. It's made as a salt, but I don't think it's ever used as a salt. Also, you made other pieces that have Norwegian identity, like the little tenge, which have the little horse's heads on the side. Um, yeah, and other pieces. Everything was done in this technique, uh, spoons, tea strainers, um, bowls, trinkets, jewellery, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> um, The other country that was very famous for this technique, which was Plikajur, is Russia. This piece is an Art Nouveau champagne glass made by Ovchinikov. Ovchinikov was the master of Plikajur in Russia. Uh, the other pieces here are Norwegian. Uh, David Anishin is another person in Norway that was very good with this enamel. Uh, and because at the time Norway was very poor, everything was made for export. So not a lot of this has survived in Norway, it was actually exported out of the country. Uh, and then um, I've been buying it back at auctions and private collections and then bring it back here and then I mostly sell it to tourists again because most Norwegians have no idea what this is. It looks very Russian, but it's actually Norwegian. So, uh, Though I have a piece of Fabergé, uh, Jakob Borisov, which is another big Russian, uh, but then you have the Norwegian David Anishin, which is the biggest jeweler still operating. You have Tostrup, Charlan, Marius Um Yeah. Of <laughs> Uh, this is a very typical set, I mean very typical art, Norwegian art nouveau, which had the dragon style, which was very famous at the time, mixed in with the organic flow. So this tea set, or coffee set, uh, is an example of that. Um, yeah. The most famous... Um, Norwegian jeweler at the time when it came to dragon style. A dragon style is kind of the Norwegian art nouveau. This is a little bit dragon style. That was Muller. This little beaker here is medieval in style, but became popular again during the, the uh, art nouveau period. And this little beaker belonged to the last emperor of Germany, Kaiser Wilhelm II. Uh, and it's from his private collection. So on the foot you can see the WR for Wilhelm Rex which means the King of Prussia. Yeah. This statue um, I bought at an auction and it's from a monastery or a convent in Germany and it's from the Art Nouveau period which we can see because she's made more Germanic. Uh, she's being given a lot of Viking look. You have symbolism which we um, use when we're making statues of Mary. She's threading the moon. She's standing on the globe as the Queen of Heaven and this moon and the globe has been made into a Viking helmet. In symbolism, Mary is stepping on the snake because she's done good what Eve did bad. Eve was um, tempted to, to eat of the apple. Mary, she's 
destroying the snake. Here they made it into a dragon, so it looks more like a Viking uh, symbol. Also, she's been giving you a brooch and Viking ornaments, and she looks like somebody from Northern Europe. So this is an example of how you take something older and you make it into something more like our Yeah.